If you're one of the many players out there on the hunt to rank up, to get Grand Champ, or even just improve a little, then you've come to the right place, because today we're going through my top 3 tips at every rank in Rocket League. I have already done this before, but it was like the third video I ever made, so it's a bit scuffed and I've decided to redo it. Anyway, just keep in mind that even if a rank is above or below your current one, the tips and tricks are still really helpful, so don't just skip to your rank because you actually could miss out on some really important stuff. Also, just before we start, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy the content, it's a great way to keep up with my uploads, it's free and it would mean a lot to me. Also, I finally managed to snag a creator code, so be sure to use code HALICOOLRL in the item shop as shown on screen now. Anyway, so that's enough rambling, let's jump straight into the easiest rank in the game, Bronze. Alright, so you're Bronze, you've just started the game and are probably wondering what to do. You've seen ceiling shots, flip resets and whatever else there is and are probably wanting to learn to do that but that is way down the line. We have a few things to cover before that. Firstly, settings. You wanna make sure you have decent camera and controller settings as creating good habits now is easier than changing them later on. I have an entire video dedicated to an in-depth look at camera settings, but the numbers on screen now is a general idea of what are classified as good camera settings. They are both close enough to allow for fine control of your car and far enough so you can see around the field. Uh, and make sure you turn off camera shake if you don't wanna feel like you're playing Earthquake Simulator. In terms of controller settings, there are a few variations but it really comes down to personal preference at the end of the day. However, I do recommend binding error right or left to a button and using that as it will come in super handy if you have experience with it in the later ranks. Personally, these are my settings. I have boost to R1 as I use a DualShock, error left and power slide to L1, this is something you definitely want to do. Everything else is pretty standard but have a glance through it on screen now. With that out of the way, let's move on to tip number 2. Ball cam. For those like myself who have played racing games, it's really odd to have your camera locked to a moving object, and for those who prefer car cam, do not get into this habit. Ball cam is a must at the high rank, so even if you hate it, just use it and you'll get used to it. And finally, the last thing I recommend, as cheesy as it sounds, is to just play. Play as much as you can. Exposure and experience is probably the best thing not only at bronze, but at any rank, so if you want to improve, just play, play, play. Also, don't forget to do the starter and beginner training packs, these are really great ways to introduce you into the basic mechanics of the game. Okay, so you managed to crawl your way out of bronze and into the realms of silver, here are the things you need to know and do. Firstly, start practicing your control with the ball. No, I don't mean dribbling on your roof and breezy flicks, just practice keeping the ball close to you and changing its direction. Remember to only use boosts sparingly. A good dribble will require you to feather the boost, and if you're boosting a lot, it means you don't have good control of the ball. A good way to drill this is to use the boost pads in free play as cones of sorts and try to dribble around them. To practice your speed, lock the ball in between your car and the wall like this and just try to keep it there. It allows you to practice speed without control, so give it a go. Secondly, you probably want to learn how to do a basic kickoff. I've seen some shocking kickoffs out there, even as high as champ, and a solid kickoff is not hard to pull off. The first thing you want to understand is that this kickoff, where you simply boost and flip into the ball, is one of the worst things you can do. You use up all your boosts and are still really slow to the ball. What I recommend at silver is to simply flip as you drive over the first boost pad. It will give you a little bit of speed and you don't waste boosts and it keeps you pointing straight at the ball. So a little bit of practice and your kickoffs will improve in no time. Finally, familiarise yourself with basic positioning. Ball chasing and double commits are a sin in Rocket League, so unless you want a tirade of toxic 12 year olds telling you to uninstall or else they'll send the FBI to SWAT you, pay attention. As this is a super large area to cover, here are some basic tips. Firstly, follow something called the 45 degree rule. If your teammate is in the far corner, sit on the 45 degree angle or diagonal from him, meaning you can cover him wherever the ball goes. Additionally, try to keep an eye on your teammates, listen for audio or visual cues and if you see them going for the same ball as you, do not go as well. It will only result in a double commit, tilt and ultimately a loss. Rocket League is a team game, so sometimes you have to do the right thing for the team even if you feel you have the better position than your teammate. Now that you have a bit of experience in the game and are starting to improve, you enter the lands of gold. The first thing I recommend drilling is power hits and shots. Despite seeming kinda useless, this is actually extremely useful. Being able to hit the ball far, with power, and often on target will catch your opponents off guard, especially as they won't be expecting it at this rank. Hitting the ball with your nose will generate the most power, whereas hitting it with your wheels or roof limits it, so try to avoid those. 
With this in mind, try to utilize something called a half volley. This means that you hit the ball just after it bounce. So using good old physics, the ball already has an upwards momentum. So all you need to do is provide it with a forwards momentum and you can yeet that ball back across the field. A great way to practice clears is in free play and when shooting, use the pack called ground shots. Next up is wave dashes and half flips. These are staples of the high ranks, so the earlier you learn them, the better. Wave dashes allow you to get the speed of a flip without actually flipping, as you do a little jump which you can then chain into another flip. It is great to use off almost any surface, especially to gain speed on low boost. Additionally, half flips allow you to do a 180 degree turn without doing the turn. There are plenty of tutorials on this, so I won't explain it, but it looks like this and is super useful if you find yourself facing the wrong way. And lastly, we have another mechanic, the fast aerial. Just do yourself a favour and learn this mechanic. It essentially allows you to get up into the air faster than any other type of aerial as shown on screen now. I won't go in an in-depth tutorial, but you first must jump, pull back on the stick, and then let go and jump again, all whilst boosting. There are plenty of tutorials on this, so go check them out. Alright, so you've managed to climb your way out of gold, probably thinking, oh boy, am I improving fast. <laughs> Platinum's here to stop that. This is when people generally have an idea of the game and you'll see a vast selection of skills on show. Some will be flip resetting whereas others can't even aerial. So like the other ranks, don't be that mosquito that gets drawn into the light of flip resets, just focus on the basics. Firstly, back wall clears and defense. The amount of times goals are scored off the back wall or above the goals because no one clears it is absurd, so learning it will make a huge difference. Doing training packs such as backboard reads will help you get this down super easy. A ball that has been cleared to the side will be exponentially harder for the opponent to score, as well as giving you a good opportunity for a counter attack. Secondly, to continue the defensive theme, back post rotation. This is something that is so underrated yet so key to use, so guys just please listen up. To demonstrate, look at this. If you just hit the ball and need to rotate, you must rotate on the far side of the field. This is because it allows the next player to challenge and then you can get boost and position at the back post. The advantage of being back post rather than near post or in the middle of the net is as follows. If you are not back post, you are vulnerable to shots that can go behind you, meaning you cannot save them and you must stop and it's just really awkward in general. If you are back post, you can save anything as it is all in the direction of movement and momentum, letting you not only save it, but continue to grab boost and possibly mount a counter attack. Lastly, this isn't a skill, but rather some advice. Do not get ahead of yourself. You must always practice the basics, and if you've ever heard the saying, you must learn to walk before you can run, you'll understand. You cannot flip reset without first learning to aerial, air roll, and aim your aerial shots, so there's no point really trying. If you focus on these basic skills first, it will not only let you rank up faster, but also make it a lot easier to improve later on. As we move into the higher ranks, we are delving into more advanced and specific topics. Firstly, adaptation. This is something that requires experience and focus on your behalf. It cannot be taught as it is very situational. As the name suggests, it involves you adapting to your teammates and opposition. If it is your turn to go for the ball, but you hear a teammate jumping, then don't go. If an opponent is going to beat you to the ball, then go for a 50, a demo, or just rotate out. It's all about being smart with how you play and doing the best thing you can in a situation. Again, I cannot teach you how to do it, but look back through your replays and see we could adapt it better in a situation like the ones I just mentioned. Additionally, we have free play. Yes, I know it's a basic tip and you're probably like, hey, Elical, I already do a lot of free play, man, I just want to play and rank up. To that I say no, you are not doing enough and take whatever amount of free play you are doing and just do more. I generally say to try to match each minute of game time with a minute of free play, but the more the better. Sometimes I just sit in free play for over an hour, hitting the ball around, I chuck on some music and just fall into a rhythm. Seriously, it looks boring, but it improves literally every aspect of your mechanics. To finish off the diamond ranks, we have advanced aerial car control. Remember when I said to buy an aerial left or right to a button? This is when it comes in handy. If you haven't already, you want to start using it. The reason behind this is it allows you to rotate on two axes, as you can air roll and move the stick at the same time, and independently as well. If you use normal air roll, however, you must use the stick to air roll, meaning you can only move on one axis. This essentially means you have greater control of your car, and to practice, again use the pads as cones in free play and practice weaving in and around them. Alright, things are getting serious. If you're a champ, you put in some serious hours into the game and are quite familiar with it. The first thing I recommend is something a bit more obscure, and that is to have meaning to your hits. 
What I mean by this is don't just hit the ball because it's in front of you, actually think about where you're hitting it and what is going to result from that. If all that's going to happen is opposition and gaining possession, then maybe look for a pass or keep possession. If you're a last man back and have a tough shot, instead of shooting, play it slow and maintain pressure to wait for a better opportunity to arise. This forward thinking mindset is what will get you into the higher ranks, so use it. Secondly, we have game speed. Quite often you find yourself getting beaten to the ball in awkward positions that you're not really comfortable with. My advice is to just go for it, obviously within reason. You'll not get better at hitting these balls if you do not practice it, so whether that be in free play, in game or in a training pack, test yourself and it will pay off in the long run. Lastly, we have the 50-50 game. Pretty much every game mode boils down to a set of 50-50s. If you win more, you have a much greater chance of winning the game. In order to get better at winning 50s, you must play 1v1. Compared to other modes, it gives you the most opportunities to practice 50s and you can actively learn how to do them. I understand it's tilting, but do not worry about ranking up when you are learning to do something. Take the hit on your rank now so you can improve later. Alright, so if you're GC, odds are you don't need too much advice, but here are some of the things that I've learned from my time in Grand Champ. Firstly, the speed flip. It's tough to learn, but it is seriously useful. Winning kickoffs allows your teammates to push up field straight away and have confidence with what will happen. The speed flip is currently the fastest known way to get to the kickoff, and if you can pull it off, it will seriously help you. I learned it a while ago, and I'm now super confident with winning the majority of kickoffs against people my rank. I have a full in-depth tutorial on my channel, so just go check that out. Secondly, I would focus on opponent awareness. This sort of comes under an advanced adaptation section, but essentially what I'm saying is you should be able to keep tabs of your opponent's position whilst you do whatever you're doing. If you are dribbling, you should be keeping an eye on them so you know when to flick. If you're going for an aerial, you must be watching to see if they jump or do not jump. And if you're going for a 50, you want to make sure you're positioning yourself in an advantageous position relative to them. To finish it off, momentum. At Grand Champ, the speed of play is pretty high, so maintaining speed and momentum is a must. It not only allows you to conserve boost, but also to get some more balls. So work on your power slide, wave dash, and half flip recoveries to ensure you never come to a full stop. Quite often people think that they couldn't have gotten to a certain save, however in reality if their recovery and momentum conservation was better they definitely could have. And finally we have Supersonic Legend. You're in the top few hundred worldwide and on the brink of professional play, so I can't really say anything. Don't know why I'd be watching this video anyway, you'd probably be more qualified than me to give out the advice. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed these tips guys, I put a lot of effort into creating this video to provide you guys with the best advice possible, but I am sure to miss some stuff, so leave extra tips with the associated rank down in the comments. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to support the channel and join the community, as well as use code HELICOOLRL in the item shop. Other than that, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.